In this chapter, we're going to be talking about reaction rates. The rate of a reaction is how fast the reaction occurs. But what exactly does that mean? The rate of reaction is a positive quantity that expresses how the concentration of a reactant or product changes over time. So if you consider this reaction, where we have N2O5, which decomposes into 2NO2 and 1 half O2, the concentration of N2O5 decreases over time because it gets used up. And if you look at this graph here, if you follow the blue line, you'll see that the concentration of N2O5 decreases over time. You can see that the concentration is getting smaller and smaller. Um, similarly, the concentration of NO2, since it's a product, if you follow the red line in the graph, it's going to increase over time. Um, products get produced, so the amount of them are going to increase. When you look at oxygen, it also increases if you look at the green line, but it doesn't seem to increase as fast or by as much. Well, why is that? Well, if we look at the coefficients in the equation, we've got a 1, a 2, and a half. So if you look at the 2 and the half, does it make sense that the NO2 might increase four times faster? then the O2 increases, and that the NO2 might increase twice as fast as the N2O5 decreases. We can write this as changes in concentration. So I'm going to say minus the change in concentration of N2O5, minus, because it's a reactant and it's being used up, equals the change in concentration of NO2 over 2, Okay, equals the change in concentration of O2 over a half. Okay. So if I look just at these right here, if I rewrote that, you would see that the change in concentration of NO2 is two times the change in concentration of N2O5, which makes sense, right? I'm going to this concentration is going to change twice as fast as this concentration because of the stoichiometry of your reaction. Okay. Um, we're going to write this now as the rate of a reaction. Um, so rate includes time. So all we're going to do is add the factor of time to these. So minus the change in concentration of N2O5 over the change in time. So how much time has passed by equals the change in concentration of NO2 over 2 times delta T is the change in concentration of O2 over 1 half the change in time. an equation of this sort of general form, AA plus BB equals CC plus DD. The lowercase a, b, c, and d are the coefficients, and the capital letters are the reactants and products. So the rate for any reaction is just minus the change in concentration of A over little a times delta T, minus the change in concentration of B, over little b delta t, change in concentration of c over c delta t, and the change in concentration of d over d times delta t. Okay, keep in mind that reactants are always being used up, okay, and products are always being produced, so negative and positive. For a very general term, let's kind of do an example here. Here's a, here's a reaction we've seen before. Nitrogen plus hydrogen gives you ammonia. Okay, and let's say that we're given that molecular nitrogen is disappearing at a rate of 0.10 moles per liter per minute. Okay, so the concentrations will always be in moles per liter or molarity. So moles per liter or molarity per minute and we usually write it out as moles per liter per minute. Okay, so if we write the rate for this, the rate is minus 
the change in concentration of nitrogen over the change in time, my, or minus the change in concentration of hydrogen over three times delta T, and then the term for ammonia, and this is equal to this. So the question is, at what rate is hydrogen disappearing? Well, the change in concentration of hydrogen is going to be 0.1 times 3. Okay, so 0.3 moles per liter per minute. Okay, again, do you see where this equals that? So we're going we're gonna to bring the 3 and multiply over there, and you get that delta H is 0.1 times 3. Um, and it's automatically going to be a negative, okay, because it's a reactant and it's being used up. At what rate is the ammonia, the NH3, appearing? Well, that seems to be appearing twice as fast as the nitrogen is disappearing. So the change in concentration of ammonia is just going to be 0 0.10 times 2, or 0.2 moles per liter per minute. I, think I forgot the liter there. I just want to talk about how can we actually measure some of these rates. Okay, let's say I did an experiment where I measured the concentration of the N2O5 over time. And I would have come up with this, this curve. Okay, this is the same thing we were looking at before. We just kind of uh, focused in on it a little bit more. The way you can tell how fast something is going is you need to, because it's a curve, you need to draw a tangent to the curve. I think we know what tangents are, right? A tangent to the curve. It's sort of perpendicular to the point you're talking about. And then you would find the slope of that line. The slope of the tangent. And that would give you the rate of reaction at that one particular time. Okay? So in this case, the delta y 0.056, delta x is 2, and you come out with the rate at that particular time is negative 0.028 moles per liter per minute. What I want you to notice, though, is that the graph is kind of a curve like this, right? So at this point, what do you notice and at this point, and at this point, what's happening to the tangents? Okay, they're getting less steep. What do you suppose that means? That means when the slope is steeper, the reaction rate is fast. It's a little less steep here, so maybe it's medium. And here it's slow. Later on, we're going to talk about why, but as a reaction takes place, the rate of reaction gets slower and slower and slower. It starts off very fast, or as fast as it's going to be, and then it gets slower over time.